Hey, good morning. It's Thursday, November 28th. Thanksgiving morning. I'm sure there's a lot of people in the house right now preparing their Thanksgiving meal or working on it last night or kind of doing it today. And those two days, people use it to uh, get prepared, chopping vegetables and all that stuff. You know, I remember it well, you know. So for everyone who's celebrating Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> so anyway, I woke up this morning and I was just like, oh my God, you know, um, you know, it's hard for me to get up in the morning because it's like, oh my God, I can't, it's the whole reality thing. Okay. But, you know, um, it's because there's nothing really stimulating in my life. There's nothing that's keeping my mind off of what really happen you know it's hard for me to you know, really think about what I can do for the future not knowing what my future holds because I don't like other people making decisions for me okay so which just brings me to this topic okay and I'm not going to name specific names I'm really going to not do that but I'm just going to be very general about people who make life decisions for other people um you know when I think about this issue you know um, and I, I, I have to consider the main, the main issue that I'm looking at when it deals with people who've made life decisions for me. Um, and when you decide to sever ties with people who abuse you, um, cause sometimes people might do something, they do something wrong and it doesn't necessarily take up the, I mean, it shouldn't be the determining factor on your relationship with that person. You know what I mean? People make mistakes, and I, I fully understand that. But, you know, I'm, I'm considering all the abusive things that I have dealt with throughout the years. And when I think about, you know, what was manipulated in my life, um, and then the outcome of that, you know, the, the harassment that it snowballed into, all of that, there was nothing peaceful or pleasant or anything that I felt was loving in that okay so obviously that takes a big part the bullying issues the abusive issues tend to be the highest percentage of that dynamic that I have with this particular group of people um, that I've disowned and um, when I think about it it's never based on um, anything that has been positive, everything that has happened has been negative. So when I think of people making decisions, I believe that they decided to, you know, mess with my career and use flimsy, flimsy excuses that really, um, are discriminatory. Like for example, I know I get monitored for why eating apples at my desk. Okay. And this has been going on for years before I realized that my family was involved in it. Um, and there's you know, seem, these seem like very minor issues, but when you're dealing with, you know, people who are competitive or whatever, and it's in a gossiping um, environment, like you know, you're 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 gaining, you're networking. People are networking with other people in order to like bully up on this one particular person. In this case, me. Um, these little things are used as ammunition, you know, and <clears throat> so that's one thing. So, you know, um, that's, 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 you know, you can't make someone's life decisions based on that. Um, that I'm supposed to, what, you know, eat more or whatever. You know, I, I didn't, I did that when I was younger and I didn't like it. Um, when I think of, you know, someone choosing your job based on those issues, um, those are not valid reasons. You know, I do think that um, because they must have known that, that I had no idea that, you know, I mentioned Stephen Lyles was involved or uh, probably wanted to come around and see me or something. Um, so they thought, well, you know, uh, we're going to, you know, reduce her income just in case, you know, they end up getting married. Well, just in case we get married, you know what I mean? If that's what they're thinking, you know, these are all excuses that people try to use. Um, <clears throat> But I'm sitting here waiting around for looking for work and trying to get my life together um, after leaving the farmer's place, going to, from place to place. 
and this bullying continues to happen and I'm thinking to myself like this is not a loving relationship you know obviously it's everything that re has occurred has been very traumatizing for me and um, you know I don't have any idea um, I didn't then and I don't really have any definite idea as to the outcome of this but I do know that it's it's a bullying issue and one that um, is is very you know it's very painful because um, you know it, it's I've I used to really like working and now I'm just like you know it's hard to find motivation to get out and do something but I don't want to be stuck where I am either um, this I I don't I think you know I, I try to you know be take each issue you know little by little like each issue of this whole thing that has made me get get to the point that I've gotten to now okay and what bothers me the most is the fact of course that it has been going on for so many years and the things that I've suffered in the past is a direct connection to what I had to deal with and knowing that it came from these people um, <clears throat> so I understand that some of their even though their motives are obviously malicious and very um, to meant to bully and harass and intimidate and have a competition you don't do this to somebody that you care about you don't you don't okay there's nothing loving about throwing someone out of a job and then making jokes about it after it happens and then you know threatening a person and putting them in a very you know <clears throat> precarious situation that's not love okay that is some sort of competition that is based on jealousy and comp you know and um, but I, I I carefully thought about this issue when I made my decision like it's not it's not a different it's not a difficult thing to, to come to a decision to come to um, my biggest issue is the fact that you know I've always been like um, told what I'm thinking I've always been told what I'm doing and my motivations for doing it and I know that in this issue I am very sure that my family um, has thought that my uh, that my interest in Stephen Lyles was going on even through the 2000s when I had no idea that he was even around you know what I mean I had no idea he was around so and I've always liked clothes you know and I've always you know done these things I've always done these things you know even in high school junior high I would say I started you know learning more about you know coordinating colors and stuff like that and I was pretty experimental anyway but I've always been like this so but but anytime there's an issue it's always been like, well, you're doing it because of this. I remember there was a Fred, Fred Flintstone doll or something. There was this, this story that went on in my family about this Fred Flintstone doll. And I was doing it for one reason, but they always insisted I was doing it for another. You know what I mean? Because I was like acting out something. I was doing like a little play in my mind. And then they, it's always, there's, I don't understand them and they don't understand me. They don't. Okay. Um, you know, to, now, I know that they probably thought that maybe, because they don't know me as an adult. They only know me as someone who kind of observes me as an adult because they get all the information from, you know, the people that I've worked with, you know, the people that they used as spies, I guess, or, um, uh, and then also, not so much spies, but you know what I mean, people like your, your neighbors or your people that you see at the grocery store or whatever, they get this sort of information from them. And then, you know, um, so they don't really know me as an adult. 
you know, and there's a contrast between who I am and as, as an adult and who I was as a kid because in my environment growing up, I was always in, I was in the midst of it. Like, you know, they, they, they create havoc. They've created all this sort of havoc in my adult life on a covert level, like in the, out in the, the workplace area or in certain social settings where there's other people and they can communicate with these people. Okay, but back then, I was in the heart of it. I was in the same house with these people. And I will tell you, my spirit was low every single day. Like, I, I never felt happy, ever. And, um, well, I mean, I did make my jokes, okay? And you gotta understand, when people make jokes, oftentimes, even, co you know, people who are uh, comedians, you'll find, like, there's, like, I think there was two comedians that committed suicide, okay? I'm not saying that my, my issue is that severe, but I'm just saying is, like, some people take refuge in their sense of humor, you know, to deal with their bullshit, you know what I mean? You don't think of it that way, but you just know that laughing and being goofy is, gives you a break and it, you know, relieves you from something, so you enjoy it, you know, so you engage more in to maybe extreme humor, no matter how absurd it is, you know? But I, I, you know, these people don't mesh with me. They don't mesh with me. and. It's not about, I know that some people think that, you know, you get to a certain age and, you know, there's expectations that society tends to put on other people um, on how, you know, based on what a person does in their age. And I've already explained the fact that people have their hobbies, have this, but when they are able to make life decisions and they are able to be responsible in those life decisions, then that's all that really matters, you know? Um, but I know that, that, that they, they could use excuses. People can use excuses to try to um, manipulate the lives of other people, you know, but hide a, a different agenda, you know, because like I said, if, if people really cared, they bring these sort of issues out in the open, you know. Um, now, if she thought that... <laughs> If she thought that I was mentally ill, which obviously I'm not, but I, I think a lot of people, if people, uh, a lot of people who have, like, you know, who are kind of clever, smart, bright, intelligent, whatever, they tend to be more eccentric. Why? Because they're more interested in what they, they see in front of them or what pleases them. They're not somebody who's interested in, like, you know, necessary, not necessarily, um, trends that are are going on at the current moment or whatever so i tend to be more involved in my little world and some people think that i'm not interested in venturing out into my my little world i would love to you know what i mean i i've always been more talkative and social in my past okay which is something my family resented right um but my ex-family resented but you know that's how that's my that's how i am i'm i'm, I'm more talkative i was more talkative back then um, now I don't really like people because I see how fucked up they are. But still, um, you know, I'm I'm more, I, I had a very bubbly, you know, disposition. And it's always been like, you know, we're just, some people are just not the same. They're not the same, you know. And I think, you know, um, when I think of them thinking that I had some sort of mental disability, when... How could they think this when, you know, obviously I've been going to work and, but see the thing, the reason why they think this is because they create these social situations in the workplace where, um, I'm constantly being bullied by the people that they're in communication with. And because once you get into a mobbing situation and if you, you look this up, you cannot change a mobbing situation. It's like, it's, it's impossible, you know, it's impossible then you know then in their mind they're like see she she messed up another job when that's not the case i didn't mess up any job the the thing is is that they've created social complications with their bullshit with their you know the eating apples and then having people come and create tension unnecessary tension bullying like for example um the lady over in chatsworth the eight the ar lady <clears throat> that lady was just outright rude and said all kinds of inappropriate things and she took it upon herself even though I never did anything to this woman to use other people to gang up on me, all because she was in communication with these people that used to be my family. So it's this sort of stuff that goes on. And you cannot survive that. You can't. 
And the same thing over there at the farmer's place when the guy was taking credit for my work. When the guy messed up the inventory and somehow I ended up getting blamed for it. When he was the one who was trained on everything and he did, you know, didn't want it and he was whatever. All these things have gone on, right? But I have carried the burden of so much of so things that didn't belong to me, you know? So I guess the purpose of this video is like I'm trying to... I, I carefully realized and, and thought about, you know why I made this decision and it wasn't difficult for me to make like I just you know how do you cut people off you just don't want anything to do with them and you have that right to do that I um um but you also have to I also have to think okay you know I have to consider certain points I'm I'm a very fair person when I, when I when I do thinking like when I'm considering something I keep thinking okay well, what about this issue okay um yeah I think people people have to come to realize that not everybody is meant to be like them you know um i think we want to get along with other people and but sometimes we have our own preferences and we get you know people can get a little bit upset if you don't show the same interest in what they're showing you know and it's not necessarily um it's not um uh, something to um it, when somebody doesn't show the same interest in your hobbies or your interest or whatever it is, it's not saying that you don't, you hate them or that they're stupid or that their stuff's no good. It's just that everybody has different likes. And it's, and, and it's, it's, it's not fair to expect other people to, you know, like the same things that you like or whatever, you know? And, um, but when you bully people, you bully people into, following your orders okay that is you know there that's inappropriate it's not it's not appropriate and especially when they have the right to live their life the way they want to you know whether that be religion or whatever or maybe even in the case where you know they didn't want me to see Stephen Lyles and they and the excuse or the reason that they probably are saying that they didn't want me to see Stephen Lyles is because of Stephen's um, maybe he doesn't have, you know, a shitloads of money in the bank and he doesn't have what you call like a, uh, I don't know, maybe he's, he's not somebody who's wealthy, you know, he might work a regular job or whatever, but, you know, once again, those are, those are things that, um, <clears throat> I can understand why parents would think those sort of things, okay? But in this case, I think it's based on competition. I don't believe that, I think it had something to do with it, yes, because she herself maybe not, would not do something like that. But um, in this case, I think it's just, you know, obviously when you're in, there's competitions that are created, it's their responsibility to try to sabotage certain things, no matter what it is. Um, if you have, if you have friendships and then it's their responsibility, just like they sabotage all my friendships, they sabotage everything. They sabotage your job. They sabotage, you know, um, your friends, people that you want to know, whatever. So it's a part of that. You know what I mean? Um, but I, I've never, and the reason why, um, I, I, uh, I don't need anybody taking care of me. I don't know what would happen it, or if he and I would even click, you know what I mean? Um, I, I don't know. I think he's, you know, a nice looking guy. I know that we have a lot of things in common hobby wise, like interests and stuff like that. Um, but it should not be something that it's none of my family's business really. And I never, you know, I never expected my ex-husband to take care of me. I never wanted that, you know, I, when I got old, younger, when I was younger, you know, I kind of thought that was something that was expected. Um, because that was how my my parents it was with my parents my dad was like the main breadwinner or whatever and i don't like talking about personal stuff because this issue is personal and it doesn't belong out in the public you know what i mean so for this to even have anything to do with my employment it it's wrong you know you're not supposed to, anything that relates to your marriage or anything like that is a no-no when it comes to employment okay but um you know i i to sit here and say well you know she can only do this if you know, because really, I, I have no idea what I'm going to do at this point. But my, my thing is, is that you don't base your job or what you're going to do for a living based on 
you know, if you're, if you marry this particular person, if your husband has a disability or he's not disabled, if he makes certain money, it's not based on that. It's illegal to base it on that, you know, and especially when I have no, absolutely no idea. And I'm not even supposed to know that. I'm not even supposed to know that, but I figured it out. Okay. I figured it out. Cause like I said, I had no idea he was involved in this until like 2016. And then I started to keep thinking, okay, who's involved in this? Like, and then I realized my, my ex-employers were involved in this. And then, th then I figure, okay, well, then this must've been a part of the rumor because rumors get started on, it's gotta be a big rumor. Okay. So, you know, people don't just turn against people for no reason. So I try to figure out what is it? Okay. I know that, you know, I lied to my husband many years ago. Okay. So, but I, I, so what, I mean, I, I can't understand that. So what is so scandalous? What's the big scandal? So then maybe I kept thinking, maybe they thought that I was with this guy because the last, all this shit started happening when I was working over at organized sports. And I remember writing him a, a text message back then. So all of that, I had to start thinking, okay, this has got to be it. It's got to be it. Right. So, um, you know, and then, you know, obviously there was a time when I, before I knew all this, you know, I, I had no intentions of leaving Joel. I had no intention, but my, my employment was getting messed up. And because I realized he had, I already told you this issue. Okay. What happened on that, you know, but all I know is, is that I could be single for the rest of my life or not, but whatever the case is, I don't like people getting in my way and doing things like this or expecting me to, you know, um, to, um, want to go along with their plan. It's rude to, you know, it's rude, offensive. I mean, downright illegal and disrespectful and something that I won't comply with. Like, you know, right now I'm, I, I'm working a job and I'm getting along okay with the owner and stuff. And, and I get along with the people that I work with and I'm fine there for now. Okay. But it does affect my, my, my morale, you know, knowing that this was not my choice. It affects my morale knowing that I being put in a situation based on somebody's punishment, punishment for what? for eating apples at my desk, you know, and if I'm supposed to sit here, is it because I was supposed to, you know, sit here and not eat apples at my desk because I'm supposed to be reserved to go back to my husband? Cause I'm not going back to my husband, my ex-husband. He made a big mistake, big mistake when he did that, when he did that, when he did what he did, when he allowed himself to be, uh, to, with how, with, to plot, against me like that, you know, and then hold that over my head. You do not hold my survival over my head. You do not do that. You do not do that. So, you know, um, so then what's the, what's the issue? Why is that a problem? You know what I mean? I, I, I'm already divorced. So why is that a problem? They think that I'm going to go and be with, I, I don't, and he's not even in my vicinity. Or he might, he might be, I've had suspicions that he might live here. Does he live here? I don't know that. Cause if he does, I haven't seen him. You know what I mean? I, I, I haven't seen him, but I, I keep thinking, why would somebody monitor that? Why would somebody monitor what I'm eating? Why would they care? Would they, and would I, I don't understand that. That part, I don't understand. You know what I mean? But I have the right to be with whoever I want and see whoever I want, you know? Yeah, I know it seems weird for a woman to be on her own at my age, but it happens, you know, it, it does happen. It's, it's a lot, the, most, I would say this happens to a lot of single women being, t a lot of single women are targeted. They're targeted, you know, and it's wrong because they need their jobs. They need their ability to move and do what they need to do to take care of themselves, you know, and I know some people, they, you know, they want to, um, uh, you know, I don't, like I said, I don't, I don't know who, I don't know Stephen Lyles that well. Okay. Um, but I don't, nobody has the right to tell me who I, I can and cannot like. And they just don't, you know, um, I've always thought that he was an attractive guy, you know, um, and he's always kind of intrigued me that way. And so, Finding out that he does, 
I, I don't know. I, it doesn't, I don't care. I mean, like I said, I see people all the time. It, it, it's not severe. You know what I mean? Obviously, it's not severe. I don't know. It's just whatever. I see all this all the time. People, to me, I, I meet a lot of people who, who claim to be educated and whatever, but I think they're slightly off. So, I mean, it doesn't matter to me, you know. But one thing or another, whether I was with him or not, you know, this whole thing is, is stupid, you know. And that's why I get, I'm just thinking, you know, you know, I'm, I'm depressed, like, every day. Like, I'm just like, oh my God, like, I just can't deal with this reality. I can't, I can't, you know, I don't like knowing that somebody made my life you know this unhappy for the time that they have you know and then it expects me to be loyal to them like you know that they did me a favor they didn't do me any favors they didn't do me any favors this has been a complete and utter nightmare i wish they would have just left me alone you know I wish they would have never took it upon themselves to, you know, devise this plan, you know, and it has, it, it's affected my mood. I mean, I am like, I rarely smile. I'm just like, wow, you know, how could somebody be so selfish and evil to, to do something like this? And then I just... I don't know. I already know. I mean, they got mental issues and everything else, but still, you know. But anyway, I, I, aside from all that, I don't want to think about that too much today. Today is Thanksgiving. I'm going to get dressed here in a moment. And right now, I'm just kind of sitting in my pajamas and taking it easy, trying to, you know, deal with my mood issue. You know what I mean? I try to. I'm trying to straighten out my feelings. Like, my, my mood is just really off. Like, I'm so disgusted and angry. I still have a lot of anger there. I still have a lot of anger. And um, just, like, I'm angry and I feel violated that my space has been violated. Because I'm not the kind of person, I don't like to do things. Um, I, I'm highly motivated on my own. I'm highly motivated on my own. And then the thing that I cared about, what motivated me to deal with everyday living, which was my job or what I did for a living, somebody took it upon themselves to make those decisions for me. You know? And that takes the joy out of that right there. You know? And so, and then I realize how, you know, that I used to enjoy working with people and now I'm just like, I look at people and I'm like, oh my God. You know? You know, it, it changes how you see things. You know what I mean? So, you know, I, I, every day I'm like, gosh, I wish I wasn't born in that family. Every day I'm like, oh my God, it was a terrible thing, terrible thing to be born in that family. It, it's, it's a nightmare. They've caused me nothing but pain. Anyway, going to try to deal with my mood, you know, got to try to get my mood up. Uh, and it's a struggle. It's a struggle because, you know, I don't have anything to do during the day. And I would love to, like, you know, if... The thing is that I've been living in this bubble of theirs that they've created for me for the longest time. And what I mean by that is that, you know, they um, they control the image that people have of you. Because they, they tell all these rumors and that I'm running around with Stephen Lyles and, the, you know, um, and that, you know, they set me up in jobs and then they end up getting me fired and then that's somehow my fault. And then all these things that they, they do, right? And then, so then they said that, then that destroys your social life. And then they are the ones who destroyed my online relationships. So, and then they will not allow you to talk to your previous employers because they dominate all that too. So then this is all you have. And since they've already tarnished the image of, of you with other people, you don't really, what do you do? You know what I mean? And that image that they, 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 they use, they shit that they use to tarnish you is all subjective and based on their own competition and their jealousy, you know, which incites this in other people. And then they start, you know, playing their games and people start taking sides. And all I did was just move here and had nothing to do with it. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I mean, it, it put a lot of damper on my life. 
you know, I'm, I don't know. I guess what I'm grateful about this, this Thanksgiving is that I don't have the heart to do what these people have done to me. Wrapping up this video, have a great day.